Hello, this is William from Visual Components. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create and simulate a VAL3 application using the Stobly add-on. This requires Visual Components Premium. For this video, I will be using Stobly Robotics Suite, or SRS, version 2016, with a CS8 controller. To get started, the first step is to turn on the Stobly add-on in Visual Components Premium. I'll click the File tab to go backstage. Click Options, click Add-on, and for the Stobly add-on, click Enable, and notice here you have to restart the application. So click OK to save the change, and then restart Visual Components Premium. OK, I restarted Visual Components Premium. The next step is to create a robot cell in the 3D world. I'll go to my eCatalog panel, and under Models by Manufacturer, scroll down, and select Stobly to display these Stobly robots. I'll now search for a robot called RX170. I'll now add that robot to the 3D world. And you usually want to use the Stobly add-on when programming the robot. I'll now go to the Program tab. And in the Windows group here, use the Show drop-down menu. And you have two panels. The Stobly cell configuration panel can be used to connect a controller and map a robot. The Stobly Controller I.O. Mappings panel can be used to connect signals in the components and robot in the 3D world to the controller, but you can access this panel from the Stobly Cell Configuration panel. We're also going to focus on just connecting the robot to the controller, so I'm only going to show the Stobly Cell Configuration panel, which you can now see here. There's an option to add a new emulator connection, but before we do that, we have to go to our Stobly Robotics Suite and create a new cell. So I'll use this new cell wizard option. You can rename the cell. In my case, it's called cell one. SRS and the CS8 controller is on my local computer. So I'll choose this option here. I'll now search for the robot I want for the cell, which is RX170. The RX170B is fine, so I'll select that robot. For the controller, notice the version is S7.9. I will turn on the basic inputs and outputs of the robot. And to review, I'm creating a cell that uses this robot with a CS8 controller with this version number. My version of SRS is using demonstration mode, so I'll click OK. And in the Cell Explorer panel, here's the cell, here's the controller, and the robot. To connect the controller, right-click the controller, and then click this option called Show Emulator. The emulator is now running, and you can see it here. And to get the address of this emulator, go to the Output window, and you want to display messages from the emulator. And from here, you can find out the address and port number you need for the connection. So my address is a local host address of 127.0.0.1. And since I'm using a CSA controller, version 7.9, I need to use the SOAP web service to connect the controller. So I need to use port number 851 in my case. Let's now go back to our Stobly cell configuration panel and add a new emulator connection. In the Edit Emulator Target Task pane, let's give the host name or address. In my case, it's 127.0.0.1. The default port number is 5653. So if I test this connection, it will fail. And you can see here, I'm unable to connect to the emulator. So let's now use that port number of 851 and test the connection. And you can see it will succeed. So I know I can connect my Visual Components Premium to the controller running an SRS. For the username and password, I will keep the defaults. If you already set your own username and password for your controller, you will, of course, need to change these. And if you are trying to connect a CS9 controller, the default username and password are different. But I know the connection will succeed, so we'll now click Apply to create that emulator connection, which you can see listed here. Notice by default, the emulator connection is turned on. And if I go to the Properties panel, you can see the connected state is true. But you can click this button here to disconnect from the emulator. In the Properties panel, notice its state is connected to false. Let's turn it back on. And now we need to map our simulation robot to the controller. So right click the robot element here and then click Change Connected Robot. 
A robot you can connect to the controller will be highlighted yellow in the 3D world. So I'll click this robot. It's now changed to green. I'll click apply. Another robot is mapped to the controller. To synchronize the robot with the controller, you have a couple different options. Go to the Stobly Cell Configuration panel and select the emulator connection. Now go to the Properties panel and you have this property called Simulation Mode. So by default, this is set to idle. So the robot in the 3D world is not synchronized with the controller. To give you an example, go to SRS and in the cell group, click Show 3D View. This will create a scene for the robot connected to the controller. In this case, this robot here. And you can see there's its pose. Let's also show the joints. I'll click the 3D View option here, Joints View, then the controller. You can now see the robot has six joints, which are listed for the controller. And they're at zero value, so this is the joint zero position of the robot. Let's unpin these panels to get a better view. Notice the orientation of the scene, so let's actually change that in Visual Components Premium. And now, if I was to interact with the robot in the simulation, you can see it's not updating the robot in SRS. Likewise, if I interact with this robot, you can see that the robot in the 3D world in Visual Components Premium is not updating either. So to synchronize the controller with this robot, you have a couple options. Let's go back to our emulator, go to Properties, and for simulation mode, whenever you want to control the robot in the 3D world using the connected controller, you can use virtual or polling. For virtual, this allows you to synchronize the robot with a controller using a clock that's used by Visual Components Premium. So you can use a virtual runtime or real time when running the simulation. So now that I'm using virtual simulation mode, if I interact with this robot, you can see nothing's happening in SRS. If I now interact with this robot, there's still nothing happening. That's because you need to run the simulation to synchronize the robot with the controller. So once I hit the play button, you can see the robot snaps to the same pose of the robot here. And now when I interact with the robot using the controller, the robots are synchronized. You can also use these joint controls here. Let's now see how polling works. So if we go back to our emulator connection, properties, you can see the simulation mode is grayed out. That's because you need to reset the simulation to change the simulation mode for the controller or the connection. So if I reset, go back to the properties panel, I can now change simulation mode to polling. And this will use the clock of the controller and we do recommend you probably use a simulation mode of real time with one times normal speed. So if I run the simulation, the robots are synchronized and I can now jog the robot here to update the simulation robot. Let's actually put the robot back to its joint zero position. There we go. So far the controller is telling our simulation robot what to do, but you can do the opposite. We can interact with the robot in the 3D world to update the controller's joint values for the robot. So if I reset, go back to my emulator connection and its properties, I'm now going to change the simulation mode to jogging. This allows you to teach robot in the 3D world, so you could create a program here and export it to a VAL3 application. You can also update the robot joint values here in SRS and teach your own program if you wanted to. To give you an example, for jogging mode you do not need to run the simulation, so I'm moving the robot, moving it around, but you can see in SRS this robot is not updating. But if we go back to the emulator and go to the control panel, controller status, joint position, you can see here are the joints and pay close attention to those values when I interact with the robot in Visual Components Premium. They are being updated. So if you want to see this robot synchronized with the controller, just click the simulation tab and then click this button called Start Synchro. And now you can see the robot is synchronized with what I'm doing in Visual Components Premium. Very cool. All right, let's now reset our simulation and teach a simple program to this robot. So go to the program editor and let's actually teach a position down here as a point to point motion statement. Now go over here point to point. Let's now go up top. Add an 
another point to point, and then go all the way over here. So we have four point to point motion statements in this robot's program. So if we want to simulate it, we can run the simulation. We can see we can visualize what happens, and we can also see the same thing here in SRS. Let's now export this robot's program to a VAL3 application and load it in the controller. So now, instead of this robot in the simulation telling the controller what to do, we can run the application in the controller, which then tells our simulation robot what to do. Reset, and then we need to go back to the connection with the emulator, and you want to right-click the robot element, and then click Post Process Program. This will export the program as a VAL3 application, so you can give it a name here. An easy way to run this application in Stovey Robotics Suite is to save the application in the same folder as the cell. So I'll browse there now. You want to go to your My Documents, Stobly, SRS, and find the cell. My cell is called Cell1. From there, go to the Controller file, User, and then save it in the User App folder and then click Post Process to create the VAL3 application. Let's now change this robot simulation mode, so I'll go back to the emulator connection. And we don't want to use jogging anymore, let's use virtual. And now if I run the simulation, you can see this robot is not moving because it's waiting for the controller to tell it what to do. I'll reset, and to execute that program, we have to open it, so I'll click the VAL3 tab here, click Open Application, and you can see that I named the project example in the User App folder here, and you want to open the PJX file for that exported VAL3 application. Now if we go back to our Cell Explorer, we can see there's the application, so when I click it, I now have the option here to run it. So I'll click Run Application, Go to our emulator, get a better view. We can see we need to press F8 to start. And now to cycle through the robot's program, I will use a different jog mode. I'll use the loop here. I'll turn the power on. And then the, the benefit of this option is I can just press the move button once, and it'll automatically hold it down, and the robot will go through the motions of its VAL3 application. So remember, if we want to synchronize the controller with the robot in the 3D world, we need to run the simulation. And yep, they're now moving together. Now before I end the video, I want to quickly review what we did. We used the Stobly add-on to create a connection with a CS8 controller running in Stobly Robotics Suite. We then mapped our simulation robot to the controller and demonstrated different ways to synchronize the robot with the controller. We then used the robot in the 3D world to create a program and exported it to a VAL3 application, which we then executed in the controller and simulated in Visual Components Premium. We can also go to our Help tab and then open the Help file. And if you're looking for documentation about the add-on, expand Tasks, expand Connectivity, and you want to go to the Stoli add-on section here. I do recommend you complete the Getting Started topic first, and if you're using a CS 8 emulator that's version 7 or higher, you may need to make these changes in order for the connection to work. I also recommend you look at the CS8 connections topic to make sure you need to make any other changes. I'll exit out of this, and this completes the video. If you have any more questions, please feel free to visit our forum at forum.visualcomponents.com, and as always, have a wonderful day.